Propellers, the driving force behind ships and planes. Propellers are the driving force behind most ships and planes around the world. They can propel large commercial ships through the water at 50 knots in commercial aircraft at 550 miles per hour. But how do they actually work? Today, we will explore how ship propellers function, some of their designs, and how they differ from aircraft propellers. We'll also look at an alternative that might make ship propellers obsolete. Propeller basics. Um, propeller design affects all aspects of a vessel from handling, riding, comfort, speed, acceleration, engine life, fuel economy, and safety. In determining boat performance, propellers are second in importance only to the power available from the engine itself, according to Kill Care Marina. A seemingly simple device can have drastic effects depending on its shape, size, angle, and the number of blades. First, the basics do propellers push or pull through the water? The water, the answer is both. Similar to how a household fan draws air in the back and blows it out the front, propellers push water backward, creating space in the front that water must rush in to fill. It both pulls water in and pushes it out to create forward thrust. Each blade has a pressure differential where the bottom of the blade creates positive pushing pressure and the top of the blade creates negative pulling pressure. Most propellers have three or four blades, although they can have many more, each of which creates these forces simultaneously, pulling water in and pushing it out at a higher speed creates thrust that moves a vessel through the water. The whole process is more easily visualized with an azimuth thruster pod, which combines the functions of a propeller and rudder to provide 360 degree motion. Water is sucked into the front of the thruster and pushed out the back, and the entire unit can be turned to provide thrust in any direction. Thrusters are basically a propeller inside a rudder for greater agility. But the downside to this setup is it is not cost-effective for ships that spend most of their time cruising at slow speeds on the open ocean, like container ships. These ships are built to maximize efficiency and usually have one large propeller that is stationary and only provides motion in one direction, which can then be modified by the rudder. So for its massive size, this makes for a relatively fuel-efficient vessel, but one propeller and a small rudder result in poor maneuverability. Parts of a propeller. Each part of a propeller has a name. Here is some terminology for the geeks. Geeks are awesome. We really wanted to know their propellers. Leading edge, the front of the blade where water is pulled in. Trailing edge, the back of the blade where water leaves the propeller. Blade tip, the outermost part where the leading and trailing edges meet. Cup, the small curve on the leading edge that helps the blade hold water. Blade face, the side facing away from the vessel that creates positive pressure. Blade back, the side facing the vessel that creates negative pressure. Blade root, the bottom of the blade where it attaches to the outer hub. The inner hub, the part attached to the shaft that turns the propeller. For a more in-depth look at these, check out Kill Care Marina's excellent article that goes into more detail. How does the design of the propeller affect its operation? The easiest way to categorize a propeller is by its size. The diameter of a propeller is the distance between the edges of a circle drawn around the tips of the blades. This can be as small as 1.25 inches for a Traxxas Blast radio control boat, or as big as 9.6 meters, 31.5 feet for one of the largest container ships, the Emma Mayers. The Emma Mayers propeller also weighs 131.4 tons or more than the weight of a small house. The right propeller diameter has many determining factors, including RPM, amount of power provided, required speed of the vessel, and if the propeller will be partially surfaced. Generally, larger propellers are used on slower boats and smaller propellers on faster boats, and more power usually means a bigger propeller. The differences between boat and plane propellers. Ship propellers usually have broad, thin blades that spin relatively slowly. Airplane propellers, or air screws as they are sometimes known in Britain, use narrow, thick blades that spin very fast. And wider, slower spinning blades work well in water, while thinner, faster spinning blades work better in air. Why is this? According to explain that stuff, the easiest way to think about it is that a propeller moves an object forward through a fluid. Since seawater has approximately 1,000 times the density of air, you need to move a lot more air to produce the same amount of thrust that you would in water. Airplanes also travel much faster than ships and rely on that speed to stay in flight while ships float on water and move much more slowly. But the average speed of a container ship is about 14.75 knots or about 17 MPH, while the passenger aircraft you fly on for vacation travels at around 550 MPH. These vastly different requirements call for different sizes, shapes, and angles of propellers. Propeller materials also differ between the skies and the ocean. Ship propellers have to deal with salt water, which can be very corrosive to many materials and commonly use alloys like brass. Airplanes can use all kinds of exotic materials and manufacturing methods like magnesium alloys, hollow blades, and wood composites. Ships also have to deal with cavitation, which is when a propeller working under a heavy load 
can create vapor bubbles that form and burst next to propeller blades, making little pits and wearing away the surface. A, a future without propellers. According to Explain That Stuff, Archimedes first came up with the idea of using screws to move water up a cylinder in the 3rd century BC. This method is still used today in combines and factories. But Leonardo da Vinci designed the screw-style propeller for a helicopter in the 16th century that was never built. In 1796, John Fitch, an American inventor, made the first basic propeller for a steamboat, with the modern propeller design coming not long after in 1836 from Francis Petit Smith and John Erickson, who both independently invented the new design. In 1903, twisted propellers powered the Wright brothers in the first powered flight. The idea of a screw or propeller to move an object is over 2,000 years old, with the modern propeller being almost 200 years old, 